Welcome back to Adobe Animate Basics. So far, we've learned about the workspace, basic drawing tools, and frame-by-frame -frame animation on the timeline. Today, we're going to take our first look at symbols. There are three types of symbols in Adobe Animate. Graphic symbols, buttons, and movie clips. I think that graphic symbols are the simplest to understand and also the most useful for animation. So this video will focus specifically on graphic symbols. First off, I'll explain what a symbol is. You can think of symbols as magic boxes. It can store drawings, animation, and even other symbols. Once you've put something inside a symbol, it can then be duplicated as many times as you want. These copies are known as instances. Every instance of a symbol is connected. So if you make a change to one instance of a symbol, all instances will change. This makes symbols a great way to reuse bits of drawing or animation that you've already created. Symbols also keep your workspace organized. Every symbol has its own stage and timeline. This means that besides drawings, symbols can also store layers, frames, and keyframes. Because all of that is contained within the symbol, it's easy to make big changes like moving or resizing an entire chunk of animation. Compare this to moving each individual layer, frame or keyframe one at a time, and you can see why symbols are very popular among animators. With that said, let's head into our Adobe Animate document now and learn how to create symbols. There are actually two ways to create symbols. We can go to insert up here in the menu bar and select new symbol, which will create an empty symbol. First, you have to give it a name. Let's call this dog. And if you click on the drop down menu next to type, you will see the three symbol types that we talked about before. Make sure graphic is selected and click OK. If you look at the navigation bar, which is up here just above the stage, you see that we are now inside the dog symbol. It's important to remember that every symbol has its own independent stage and timeline, which is separate from the main stage and main timeline. So even if I draw a dog here and extend the timeline to 50 frames, nothing has actually changed outside this symbol. Let's go take a look. We can exit the dog symbol by going up to the navigation bar again and clicking on this icon on the left. As you can see, here in scene 1, which is the main project scene, we've got an empty stage and timeline again. So where has our symbol gone? All symbols can be found in the library, which shares this space with the properties panel. Let's click on the library tab, and you can see that the dog symbol we just created is now in here. Dragging the dog symbol onto the stage creates an instance of the symbol. And remember that you can create as many instances as you want. And all of these instances will update when you make a change to any of them. So let's say we want to make a change to the dog. We can double click on any instance of the symbol. Let's go into this one and double clicking it will open the symbol. And you can see on the navigation bar that we are inside dog again. Here we can see the 50 frame timeline we created before. And we can also make changes to the drawing of dog. Let's get rid of dog's freckles and give him pink blushies. Clicking on either this icon or scene 1 to exit the symbol, we can see that all instances of dog now has blushies. The second way to create symbols is to convert something that's already on the stage into a symbol. Let's first move some of these dogs out of the way and create a new layer, which we'll name cat. And I'll quickly switch to the classic brush tool and Draw a cat. Now I'm going to switch to the lasso tool to make sure the entire cat is selected. And with the entire cat selected, right click somewhere on the drawing and select convert to symbol. We've got the same pop up again. We can name this cat, making sure that the symbol type is still graphic and click OK. And that's it. You can see that the cat symbol is now also in the library. There's a lot more to be said about symbols, but I think it's a good idea to end this video here. 
symbols can be really confusing and I don't want to overwhelm anyone with too much information all at once. So if you're new to symbols, I recommend just playing around with what we learned today, creating some symbols of your own and maybe making a bunch of copies of it and seeing how it all connects to each other. In the next video, we'll continue looking at symbols and until then, thank you for watching. Bye bye bye.